Hi, I'm Nora Shabazi in Flushing, Michigan. I am the founder of EBLE, Evidence-Based Literacy Instruction and Ounce of Prevention Reading Center. When my middle daughter was in second grade, she um, was put in gifted and talented program because her math scores were in the 98th percentile in the Iowa test, but her reading was a year below grade level. And so after further investigating that and trying to figure out what was going on with that, um, the school didn't think that that was anything unusual and she was good at memorizing stories and that type of thing. So I started researching reading obsessively. And I came across a book called Why Our Children Can't Read and What You Can Do About It. And it was the first thing after six months that made sense. So thanks to that book, it um, talked about a few programs that would really work to teach anybody how to read. One of them was called Phonographics. So I used that and in three hours taught my daughter how to read. She is now just finishing her first year of college and she's in the honors program. So after doing that, I realized that well, either that was a fluke or maybe I was onto something. So I started working um, with other kids and, and got the same result. So um, a year later, I ended up opening Ounce of Prevention Reading Center. Training teachers in how to teach reading um, developed Ebly and we now um, see about anywhere from 20 to 50 clients a week and anywhere from four-year-old to senior citizens we've worked with. These kids move very, very far and very fast. Ebly is um, very effective and efficient, so it's really unusual. People come here from all over the country. They'll fly in and bring their kids because the results that we get are not typical from what goes on with reading in most places. And then we also, a big part of what we do is we teach teachers how to teach reading. And after t having taught a couple thousand teachers, they say um, typically in college they don't learn how to teach reading. And we've taught teachers from preschool teachers to college professors. And they say, you know, this is the first time in this three-day training that we have learned how, what it is to really teach reading and go into schools and consult and help show them how to use these strategies and activities in the context of their classroom, whatever that may look like. And here, our philosophy is, if we look at a child and we're working with them and they're not progressing and they're not learning, what we look at what we need to do differently. And that's what we do when we teach the teachers and train the teachers. What do you need to do differently? Because these kids are not disabled, they're just not enabled. And it's the same with teachers. The longer they've taught, the more information that they've been given that really isn't very effective or efficient. So we have to kind of undo their thinking and reteach them. And, and we teach to the teacher in that we say, you need to teach to the child. Um, don't teach to the book or the manual. Um, look at the child and what they're doing and modify and adjust what you're doing um, in, in that way. In education, there's a, a lot of money being spent at, in every state, in every school, um, billions of dollars, and it's mostly being spent on stuff, more stuff. Let's put these materials in front of the teachers and the kids and maybe that'll fix it. Let's put this in front of them. And they spend hundreds of thousands, billions of dollars on that where the focus really needs to be on the humans that are teaching the humans. So teachers are suffering oftentimes almost as much as kids because they're very frustrated and many teachers will say, wow, I taught for 20 years and now I know how to do this and you know, what did I do before? The program has won awards throughout, the, just last year, um, a school near Ann Arbor in Milan, they won the Michigan's Best Award, which is the top award given by the Michigan School Board Association in language arts for a program. And what they did is taught their kids, it's accredited English class, and they teach their kids um, Ebly, and the kids go to a second grade classroom once a week and teach the second graders how to read using Ebly. Many, um, Schools and districts have done research with standardized testing pre and post with Ebly and seen results that are unprecedented, have never happened. I mean, you can't find results like that anywhere. Three standard deviations of gains, which is unheard of in, in research. You know, it's a researcher term, but, but you don't hear of such a thing. And, and so now we have schools and districts where people have been trained who go out and do presentations about their results. And a teacher up in East Jordan, actually, who um, has written a book. It's called From Learning Disabled to Enable. And her daughter was in sixth grade in special ed, reading at a second grade level. She came and got trained. Her daughter is graduating this year in honors classes and beautifully. She's been out of special ed since seventh grade. If you do this work, you can't help but be obnoxiously passionate about it. My long-term goal, pie in the sky, is that nobody will suffer unnecessarily anymore 
from not having been taught how to read. I would love to have some large-scale research done on Epley so that, I mean, we know what will happen, no matter if it's inner city or rural or suburban. Um, uh, anybody will learn how to read with Epley, but I'd love to have some, you know, research with um, control groups, you know, and a double-blind double blind study to show how much this really works so that some of those billions of dollars that the government keeps dumping into education and our flatline reading scores, they haven't changed in 30 years. You know, they've stayed right about 40% for fourth grade reading. They will really change. So that's one thing. The other is to get some computer programming that will either teach or support um, the Ebley strategies and that type of thing so that these kids can get access to it you know not everybody can come to Flushing Michigan and we you know we're a small little business with you know a background in nursing and a lot of other things that none of which are education um, or bus business really um, and trying to change the world and having faith that it will happen somehow so if you can't read and you can't write there's a whole section of life that you aren't privy to, that you're totally closed off to. And there's so much pain and emotional suffering that goes on, and that's the part that motivates all of us here, and that gives me the passion to leave my children um, for days at a time and to spend a lot of my life energy trying to get this information to teachers so that they can teach it to kids and to parents um, so that we can help their kids. I'd prefer it go through schools so parents don't have to pay money to come here and, and get their kids to you know, get up to, to snuff and they can do it and they do. Um, and quickly. I mean, we're not talking months and months or a year or anything like that, a matter of hours. Um, and these kids think that they're broken. And everything in their life then starts to revolve around hiding their brokenness and hiding their pain and hiding their suffering. And it's really not okay. So what's more important than a kid? You know, in, in the life and progress of a kid, there isn't anything. And so, you know, we don't have the right to give up on kids.